Calculating formula weights, molecular weights, and molar masses are all done exactly the same way because they all mean pretty much the same thing. Formula weights are mostly appropriate for ionic compounds, molecular weights are appropriate for molecular compounds, and molar masses are basically the same thing, just using different units. And the takeaway is that all of these calculations are done exactly the same way. You look at the number of atoms and the type of atoms, and you, then you pull atomic masses from the periodic table and add all those atomic masses together. Uh, as the first example, we have propane, C3H8. There are three carbon atoms and eight hydrogen atoms. So the mass of propane, whether formula mass, molecular mass, molar mass, whatever, it's calculated by adding three carbon atoms together with eight hydrogen atoms. So what you do is you have three times the weight of each carbon atom. Each carbon atom weighs 12.01. So you have 36.03. You have eight times 1.01, .01, the mass of hydrogen. So you have 8.08. .08. And you add all of those values together and you end up with 44 0.11 whatever units you want. With carbon dioxide, similar process. We have one times the mass of carbon, and we have two oxygens, so we have two times the mass of oxygen. We add all of those together, and we end up with 44, again, units of your choice. Iron carbonate, our third example, is slightly different. And it's slightly different because now we have three atoms instead of just two different types. And it's a little different because we have a polyatomic ion in there, and we're going to have to compensate for that. But the general process is the same. So we have two irons, 2 times 55.85. We have one carbon in every single carbonate ion, but we have three carbonate ions, so we have three carbons. So 3 times 12.01. .01. And there are three oxygens for every carbonate ion, but we have three carbonate ions, so we have a total of nine oxygens. So nine times the mass of oxygen. And if you multiply all those together, add everything up, you end up with 291.73. The problem with this is that we actually have a sig fig problem. So what you have to do is you have to do each of these calculations and track significance through that calculation. So what happens is 2 times 55.85 you have an exact number, the 2, multiplied by a measured value, the 55.85. So this should have four significant figures. So 111.7. 3 times 12.01, .01, again, should have four significant figures. That's 36.03. 9 times 16, again, should have four significant figures. That's 144.0. And when you add all of those up, remember the adding rules say you keep the smallest number of decimal places, and the smallest number of decimal places is 1. So really, your final answer should be 291.7.